We're live! Good morning, ukulele players, again. <laughs> it's a Saturday morning, it's the 18th of April, we are still in lockdown, but we can still make music. Welcome to uh, another live stream. This is uh, an adventurous ukulele live stream, uh, aimed at those of you who've been playing for a little bit more than a few weeks, uh, so I won't spend quite so long going over every chord, although... <laughs> For this piece, we might need to go over a few chords because they might be new to some of you. Um, we are going to have a go at Every Breath You Take by the police. Uh, if you've been in my groups before, then uh, you know this. Uh, we have done this a couple of uh, a couple of times, but not for several years. Um, and I've also done this in a YouTube video before from about four or five years ago when I was a young, fresh-faced ukulele player. Um, but... Uh, it was one of the first videos I ever did, and the quality of the production is uh, not quite as uh, high as I would like. Uh, so I'm on the big camera for now. Uh, I haven't got the chords on the page, so don't panic. Um, I will put them up, but we're going to have a playthrough of the song first to welcome you here. So, every breath you take. Oh, I'm going to wear my hat. Why not? So without further ado, um, and we're going to talk more about videos and chords and stuff later on. Here is Every Breath You Take. Every breath you take Every move you Every bond you break, every step you take, I'll be watching you. Every single day, every word you say, every game you play, every night you stay, I'll be watching you. Yay! 
<laughs> okay. Let's take the hat off. So that is what we're going to have a go at today. Um, let's get the cord sheet up and adjust the camera so we can see what's going on. So transitioning to the cord sheet. And let's zoom in here. That needs to go down slightly. Hopefully, there. Oh, there's the camera now. Hello, camera. Gonna move that up slightly. Uh, do, do, do the bear with me. So you can see there. A little bit better. So, uh, welcome to this uh, ukulele version of Every Breath You Take. We are going to use quite a few chords from the key of G. Um, and we're also going to use a few chords that aren't in the key of G. Now, the chord sheet on the left there uh, has got all the chords written on, and it has got all the lyrics that you need. <laughs> Liz just spotted the alternative lyrics. Good stuff. Um, the the chords themselves aren't that bad. We've just done a, a great live stream of Lean On Me by Bill Withers, uh, and that uses four different chords, C, F, E minor, and G. Uh, but there's some tricky rhythmic things in there, and it's quite a subtle song. And then I played this one when I was prepping this, and thinking, I don't, I'm not sure this is any more adventurous than the beginner ukulele live stream. However, the, while the chords on this aren't that difficult, uh, there are variations to do on them, uh, which make it a little bit more challenging. So we'll come to that in a minute. But let's whiz through the the basic idea. What we've got is we're in the key of G. So we do a G major chord. I'm not going to go through all the chords. They're on the screen and you can also see my fingers. So pause the video if you need to practice any particular chords. We do two bars of G. And then two bars of E minor. One bar of C. One bar of D. Two bars of G. So that's our chord sequence, and that is basically what the verses do every time. Sometimes the verses finish on an E minor, sometimes the verses finish on a G. It sort of depends where you're going next, um, but it's a little bit unpredictable, so I've just written it all out. Everything you need is on this page. Uh, that's why the font is so small, but it is on one page, so I don't need to switch. Um, what isn't on that page is the chord diagrams themselves. So if you find the chord sheet, which is uh, linked to in the description of this video on my website, um, you will see those chords on the second page. You will also see some other chords, but we're going to start with these. <coughs> the strumming pattern that I'm using uh, is a bit of a combination between some finger picking See, I'm not that practiced at that, and a combination of some rhythmic strumming. So let's talk about that strumming first. Um, we'll talk about the finger picking later on, and I'll give you some ideas if you want to do some of that. But the strumming is what I use for most of the song because it gives me a, a bit more energy than the finger picking. Um, I'm using my first finger and my thumb kind of held together as if I was holding a pick. You could play this with a pick if I grab a soft one here. Um, so that's absolutely fine if you'd like to play with a pick but it's quite a subtle technique. What I'm doing is damping the strings down here with the side of my palm. It's called a palm mute not that common on the ukulele it's very common on guitar um, but it means I don't have my whole hand free to strum I'm resting my hand on the strings so I get this muted kind of effect which is quite percussive and quite chuggy I quite like it see my hands actually not leaving the ukulele it's resting on the bridge like that um, just enough to mute the sound of the strings or dampen them, but not enough, if I go there, 
you ain't gonna hear anything, mate. Back down here, off the bridge, you get the full sound, and then just overlapping the strings, without the fluff, I get that muted sound. So I'm using that to give a nice dynamic range, particularly for the quieter bits. I get this kind of broody. And I'm strumming every quaver, so every eighth note. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And... But I'm emphasizing certain bits. This isn't on your sheet anywhere because this is more or less up to you how you want to play it. But I find myself falling into this pattern. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. I'm using two groups of three quavers and then a group of two quavers and emphasizing the first one of each of those groups. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. If you want to think about it in terms of the beats of the bar, you're emphasizing beat one. And then the and after two, and then beat four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. I'm still playing all of the others, but I'm just strumming a little bit harder on those other ones, uh, on those emphasised ones. Just checking the chat there. Do let me know if anything's not clear in the chat. Um, if you're watching this later, it's tough. You can't join in live next time. So that opening chord sequence with the muted system. Somebody's at the door then, I thought. Hmm. Uh, it sounds like this. One and two and three and four and G. E minor. C. D. G. Let me go to the verse. Every breath you take. the end of that first verse we finish on an E minor instead of a G like we did on the intro so keep your eyes on the chords and that will be explained so that uh, rhythmic strumming will help us get through most of these verses um, and there's nothing really too fancy uh, in the verses other than that then the chorus for one of a better word I've called it I don't really think of it as the chorus but I guess you have to call it that it's a repeated bit when we do at the end of the second verse, we finish on a G, and this time we move to the chorus, and it goes to, to a C. Ooh, can't you? No, right, where are we? I'll be watching you. Oh, can't you see? And it's one of my favourite lyrics because you play a C as you sing C, which is great. As you know, in my groups, I quite often sing the chords out. This time I can sing the lyrics just for that bit. We do a bar of C, then a C7. You belong to... Back to a G, me. Have a part. A major, not a minor. A major. Thanks. Let's sit down the shot. Every... And then move to an A7. Every step you... D sus forte. I haven't put the D sus4 in the chord sheet because it is just a D with a raised third. So there's our normal D. We move that into the shot. And there's our D sus4. D, D sus4. You can also play a D like this. So D sus4 would then be that. In this song, I prefer this one. That high note sounds a little bit out of place to me. Um, so that's the chorus. Do that once more. One, two. Oh, can't you see? You belong to me. Have a part with every step you take. Every move you do. And then we're back to our verse chords again. So so far. So good, hopefully. We do another verse. Then we've got the bridge. This is the bit that first starts to think, ooh, because we've got E flats. 
E flat on the guitar isn't very nice, but it's really not that bad on the ukulele. Let's have a look. And I've even remembered to put it in the chord sheet this time. Go an open G and then third fret on the C and the E and then first fret on the A. Uh, so we get to this bridge and now we really want to lift our strumming to everything we've got really. I'm strumming every quaver but I'm not muting anything. Since you're gonna be lost without a trace. Then move to an F, uh, normal F if you want. to the instrumental section which just uses the same chords as the verse. Um, I'm whizzing through this quite fast because you'll see uh, there are some changes that I'm going to come back and make to all of these sections. Um, this is just giving you the general structure of the song. I'm keeping that chuggy strumming going almost all the way through. Um, there's only one more part of the song to look at. After that instrumental we do that twice, then we do another chorus, then we repeat verse 3. And at the end of verse 3, you can see on the sheet it says to outro on the last time. You need to jump down to the bottom of your page. Essentially, you do another kind of ending part of the verse. So you've just done verse 3, which sounds like this. Every move you make, every vow you break, every smile you fake, every claim you stake, I'll be watching you. The outro. Do four bars of E minor. Make it broody. The break. I'll be watching. Now we've got a new chord sequence here. Two bars of G, one bar of E minor, one bar of C. I'll be watching. E minor. C. on a G whenever you're ready. So that is a very quick whiz through the chord sequences that we need for the song. And that actually took less time than the whole beginner ukulele live stream. So why is this in the adventurous ukulele live stream? Well, partly is because you can add some finger picking. kind of thing to it uh, and I'm going to go into that again in a minute but the other reason is because every single one of these chords can be improved yep. by adding another note we've got four strings on the ukulele most of these chords apart from the C7 and the A7 are three note chords they're triads they've just got three notes in we're doubling up one of the notes on the ukulele so we can add another note in so four note chords, four note chords we know well, like the seventh chords, uh, or the major seventh, or the minor seventh. But there's another one where we can add a ninth. Now, confusingly, it's not a ninth chord; it's an add ninth chord. Music notation is a bit odd. If we talk about a C seven, we mean a C major chord with a dominant seventh, a minor seventh added to it. Um, Every number we use after that, we use all these odd numbers, the 9th, the 11th, the 13th. Um, we always assume that we're also adding the previous numbers. So if I say a C9 chord, what I mean is a C major chord with a 7th and a 9th added. So C9 implies there's a 7th as well. That would make it, a f uh, if a C9 would mean it's a 5 note chord and we haven't got 5 strings. So I'm not talking about 9th chords, I'm talking about add 9 chords. Guitar players will have come across C add 9. It's a really common chord. It's a very sparkly, beautiful chord. Um, and adding a ninth to a chord really makes the chord a little bit more interesting. It doesn't really change its character very much, but it makes it slightly richer. Uh, have a listen. This is a G chord. You can hear those two notes are doubled. 
But, uh, so I can move one of them, I can raise the lower one, I'm actually going to use my thumb, you could use your finger, you could finger it like that, I'm going to use my thumb, because it can reach around there. So I'm adding in an A note to this G chord, and it still sounds like a G, but with a little shimmer in there. There's the normal G, this is the G add 9 slightly tenser and that is the note that you're hearing in the original song have I got a guitar handy hadn't planned this bit so the original guitar sounds like this you can hear that note there is that added ninth so we're trying to approximate that on the ukulele. So I'm going to add a ninth to that G. Uh, and I can even switch between the normal G and the added ninth. I can also do it to the E minor. This E minor is there. This is the note I'm going to change. Those are the ones that are doubled. So I'm going to drop that one down to here and bar those. Minor ninth, E minor add nine, one of my favourite chords. And again, you hear this in the guitar version of the song. So we're approximating that on the ukulele. And to cut a long story short, virtually every chord you hear in this song has a ninth added to it. Even the C7 and the A7, I would say, turning them into proper ninth chords. Now the problem is, if I write all of those chords in, the chord chart then looks like oh, this. <laughs> so hopefully you'll see why I didn't put this one on the screen to start with. It looks, whoa, what the... Um, it looks fairly daunting. But if you look closely at it, you can see that apart from the D-sus 4s, um, every other chord has just got a ninth added to it. So rather than keeping that on the screen and scaring everyone, I'm just going to switch back to the normal view. And just think, every one of these chords, you can add a ninth to it. Now that may be a step too far for you, but I think it's really where this song comes alive. So if you can, face it, you're going to need to relearn some chords. So I'm going to switch the chord view to these chords. So when you see a G, you can play a G add 9. When you see an E minor, you can play an E minor add 9. We can do the same with a C. Here's our C. We're going to add a ninth here. the same uh, well instead of the D add 9 because it's actually a fiddly chord to play we're going to use a D sus 4 so where you see a D you can use a D sus 4 um, that gets us through the verse so the verse now sounds like this is that minor 9 lovely chord C add 9 D sus 4 We need to make sure that we're hitting all of the string because we've now got four note chords. All of these have become four note chords. They sound a bit more complex, a bit more broody, mysterious and rich. I love added ninth chords. This is an, it's an odd song because you don't normally add a ninth to every single chord. But as far as I can tell, every single one of these chords you can add one to. Let's keep going. For the chorus, we've got a C. We can add a ninth into that. Make a C add ninth. Then when it goes to a C7... We can keep that ninth down, add the seventh note in, and now we've got a true C9, although C9 is a five note chord. We haven't actually got a C in this C chord, but because of the context it sounds right. Oh, can't you see? Oh. A lovely crunch going on to me. Same for the A. There is the ninth there. Let's get that in view. Hey, let's 
turn to an A9. Every step you take. D sus4. For this D, I would keep that as a normal D. So you can see every one of those chords, we can add a ninth to it and add sparkle. No pun intended. My name's Tim Sparks, in case you didn't get the pun. When you explain jokes, they don't work, do they? Even for the bridge, we've got our E flat chord. I can add a ninth to that. We're using that open string. It actually makes it exactly the same as the E minor add nine, but one fret lower. Which is quite handy because we go from that E minor add nine to the E flat add nine. Then the F add nine you can play in a couple of ways. The one I've written on the sheet is like this. Just take that second finger away. You can also play it up here, like an E flat chord, but lift it up by two frets. So I sometimes do that as well, but stick to that one if you want the chord chart. Uh, and then that takes us all the way through the song. So if uh, these chords are challenging enough as normal versions, that's fine. You can stick with these chords. That will sound great. But if you really want to push the boat out a bit and be adventurous, and after all, this is adventurous ukuleles, uh, have a go at these add nine chords and the ninth chords. Um, every chord changes, but every chord becomes richer, if you ask me. Oliver says English, please. Yeah, I know. This is adventurous ukuleles. Jag kan ta lite svenska om du vill hellre ha något annat språk, men uh, jag vet inte om du förstår, om ni förstår faktiskt. So uh, if you want another language, we could go to Swedish. English is fine, but I'm, when I'm talking chords, we have to go into a bit of theory. So uh, let's have a quick look at the finger picking and then we'll have a playthrough of the song. If you want to have a go at the finger picking, you're going to need to use the add nine chords to get that interest in there. I haven't found a way to play all of this as they play on the recording, on the ukulele. It's, it's alright on the guitar, because they obviously played it on the guitar. But it's difficult to arrange the notes in the same way, in the same range as they have on the guitar. But this is the closest I've found. Holding down your G add 9. I'm going to use my finger picking, so thumb's going to control the string nearest my head. Then first, second and third fingers do the next three strings, they live above each of them. So the pattern I'm going to use to start with is first, second, thumb, first. That's the first part of it. Boom, 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 boom. First, second, thumb, first. And then the second half of that pattern is third, thumb, first, second. Yeah, that's right. Third, thumb, first. First, second. So we put those two patterns together, we get first, second, thumb, first, third, thumb, first, second. Doesn't make a lot of sense when you play it slowly. I'm going to play that slowly once more. Get it right, Tim. gradually speed that finger motion up. It's going to take a little while to practice that, so don't expect to get it straight away. I've practiced it a bit more. You can also mute the strings very slightly to get that kind of plunky effect that they have on the original. Then you can use the same finger picking pattern for the E minor. It doesn't work quite as well, but it's close enough. Same right hand pattern, just holding down the E minor uh, add 9 chord. For the C, um, I tend to start with a normal C and just find a pattern that works for my fingers. The pattern that, the, that we've just learnt kind of works. And the D sus4, I'm not convinced that that pattern that works as well. 
So maybe find I, I, what you'll notice on the, the initial playthrough. I just switched to instinctive patterns. So the first two chords, G and E minor, I used the pattern that I've described, and then I just kind of went with the flow. So here is the intro finger picked, nice and slowly. Hopefully it sounds okay. Ooh, add nine chord. See, I lost my way slightly at the end there. Um, once you've got those add nine chords down there, you can actually use most finger picking patterns uh, as long as you're playing each quaver and it will start to sound okay. The important thing for me was to get that opening G and E minor that sound more or less convincing. And then you may have noticed on the playthrough, I started switching to a that finger picking pattern. If there's more than one of you in the room, then one of you play the finger picking pattern and one of you play the chuggy chords. They sound great together. I really miss playing with other musicians. Um, on the Lean On Me ukulele, I managed to get Sophia playing along and singing with me. That was great. We even had a bit of shaky going on. She wasn't brave enough to do this one, so it's just me for the playthrough. But if there's more than one of you at home, try some different parts together. And really, you know, belt this one out uh, when you get to that chorus. Oh, can't you see? So before we have a playthrough, I think that's all of the song. Um, I have on the chord chart, which is on my website, link in the description, uh, I've got both versions of the chords. Uh, that's not the one I want. I want... Oh, it's on the PDF, Tim. Wake up. That's the original one. That is the chord chart with all the modified chords. I think that makes it more confusing, so I'd rather just stick with that one. And then this page has got both sets of chords on, together with an encouragement saying... Add a bit of sparkle to the harmonies. So download that and play along. If you need to practice any of those chords, then you can pause the video now. I do that every time. It's not really a fun joke, is it? Um, before we play, do the playthrough, this video is the first of a new term. Normally, um, last term, we were still working on the fact that we kind of had a term's worth of groups already prepped. Uh, for ukuleles, but this is a new term. We're still on lockdown. No groups, no ukulele groups, no schools, no Mac Music Center. We can't meet each other, so this is why we're on live stream. I would love to keep making these videos, but musicians have got to eat too. Um, this is a big chunk of work that suddenly dried up for me. I was thinking about, you know, locking the chord sheets away behind the paywall, like all the newspapers do, or making you pay to access the videos. But none of that really feel, felt right. Um, I love doing these videos, although they take a lot of work. I might only do one a week. We'll see how we get on. But if you do like them yourself, if you get some benefit from them, um, if you think you want them to carry on, then please consider, and this is completely optional, is completely voluntary, supporting me. There is a site called Patreon that's used by a lot of YouTubers. Um, if you support any other YouTubers, you may already have a Patreon account. It enables you to give a monthly um, pledge or a monthly donation to a YouTuber. Uh, sometimes you get additional benefits from that, like uh, you know extra live streams, which you already get, or um, bonus T-shirts. I'm not quite at that level yet. This is not a purchase of anything. It's just if you want these videos to carry on, you can choose to support me each month. Bear in mind, when I used to run a ukulele group, um, most members would pay 40 quid for or 30 or 40 pounds for a whole term that's about three months um, so each month is probably worth about tenner but of course we've got restrictions on class sizes and we've got printouts of paper there's still a lot of preparation that goes into these so if you feel like you want these to carry on maybe you know five or a month or even a quid a month it's better than uh, better than nothing every little helps if you like these videos want them to carry on please have a think about that the link is in the description of the video to my Patreon page. If you don't have a Patreon account and you don't want to set one up, you can also, on the Ukulele Groups page on my website, find a link where you can donate monthly via PayPal, or even just a one-off donation. Um, it's not a purchase, it's just to enable me to carry on making the videos, if you like them. If you don't know who the hell I am, and you've just found me on YouTube, welcome. You too. If you like these videos and want to carry on, have a think about Patreon. Enough talk. Let's do a playthrough. 
I am going to turn on my reverb. I can't tell if that sounds reverb because I haven't got my headphones on. I'm hoping it sounds okay. So we're going to play through the whole piece. Uh, we're nearly at our time limit. So uh, I'm going to use the add ninth chords. Uh, we're going to do very similar like we did at the beginning. But this time you're going to play along with me. Hats on folks. Uh, I don't think there's anything else to say. Let me know in the chat if there's anything I missed, although I probably won't see it until too late. Let me know emails and stuff if uh, this is okay, if you've got any questions about stuff. I'll do my best to answer comments on the YouTube videos. L subscribe to the channel and like the video. Uh, if you subscribe and click the bell, then you'll get notifications every time I post a new video or do a new live stream. Enough talk. Let's play some music. Here we go. One two and three and four and Okay, guys, thank you for sticking with me. Uh, we're just about on our normal time to finish. 
I may, these are a lot of work to make these videos, they're a lot of fun, but I may try and do just one a week. Um, maybe try and combine beginner and ukulele, beginner and adventurous, do adventurous ukuleles, but find beginner levels within that. If that's going to make you really upset, let me know. Um, or subscribe so I can keep making loads of videos. Um, in any case, I hope you have a really good day. Let's switch back to the full camera so we can do our talkie talkie outro. I hope you have a really good day. Um, I hope your lockdown is going well. I hope this gives you something to do. Um, do check out Patreon if that's something you want to support. Uh, otherwise, have a great time and I'll see you this time next week. Stay safe.